The people of Asia, especially Central Asia and South Asia, traveled through and settled the vast territories of the Indian plains for thousands and thousands of years. These fertile lands gave birth to new civilizations, new empires. The people spoke many languages, including Pali and Prakrit. And some 2,500 years ago, Sanskrit emerged as the language of the elite. Races, cultures, and languages began to merge, and several upper branches or fallen languages were born. Shur Saini, the upper brancha of the north, branched off into Braj, Avidi, Maithili, and Khadiboti. And this mixing and blending received a tremendous boost near the end of the 12th century, when people who were actually seeking a home in Hindustan began to outnumber the people who were merely seekers of loot and easy riches. The influx of Turks, Afghans and Persians becomes a deluge by the late 12th century. The new arrivals brought with them new food, architecture, music, languages, scripts and literature. All this begins to combine with its local counterparts to create a new synthesis of life, language and culture. Amidst marching armies, haggling traders and hectic construction activity, there is a silent, unobtrusive but fast-growing presence the Sufis. These were the men who the ruler and the beggar would turn to in despair for solace and guidance in matters both profane and divine. Bakhtayar Kaki, known as Qutub Sahib, the bold star of the Sufis, arrives and settles in Delhi in the 12th century, enriching and spreading the Chishti Silsila, the most popular of the Sufi traditions in India. The Sufi shrines became centers for lively discourses, ecstatic music, passionate poetry, and serious introspection into spiritual matters this culture of open-mindedness and tolerance produces some of the finest literature and music to come out of the medieval period. The Sufis' passion for poetry and music and their love of humanity led to a constant dialogue with the Bhakti poets, especially the Nirgunis, believers in a formless, tolerant God. Both the Bhakti poets and the Sufis rejected orthodoxy and meaningless rituals and tried to convey their simple but profound ideas to their often illiterate followers. And thus a new common language began to develop. This language acquired its vocabulary and grammar from Khadiboli, but also borrowed liberally from Turkish, Arabic, Persian and local dialects. This language was called Hindi. While the Sufis reached out to the people, the Sultans were busy capturing newer territories. Both contributed to the spread of Hindavi. Hindavi, Braj and Khadiboli drew upon Telugu, Marathi, Gujarati and other local dialects and languages to emerge as Dakkani and Gujari, languages in their own right. <laughs> 